Good morning, family. It's Friday, August 13th. Some of you know, immediately after I reported to Guam, I actually went on a trip for a training exercise with the Coast Guard. And I was telling a lot of you for a long time it was in Micronesia, because that's where I thought it was, and I was kind of close. The trip actually took place in a place called the Republic of Palau. Now, Palau and FSM share a border, so I was kind of right. And I spent most of the trip working, and I didn't really get a chance to see a whole lot. Except for one day, we went to a small island called Peleliu. Now, those of you that have watched the Pacific know that Peleliu is famous for really only one thing. Before the Marines went to Iwo Jima, they first went to Peleliu. Now, General Mark MacArthur originally thought this battle was supposed to take three days. It ended up taking more like three months. Now, Peleliu is about a two and a half hour boat ride from where we were staying in Palau. Went with uh, Rich, one of the guys that I work with, along with two other people that we met in Palau. Uh, Australian defense attache and uh, IT tech that was uh, working with one of the agencies we were working with. So we decided to take a boat and uh, head out there. Now it's beautiful out there. These are called the uh, Rock Islands. This is where uh, most of the scuba diving takes place. The water is crystal clear. You can see down at the bottom. And the island itself is beautiful as well. Now it's famous for all of its monuments and for the battle sites, of course. Uh, when we were there, we met this, this man who was named uh, Stephen. He used to be a royal engineer for the British. He was an EOD tech for the British, diffusing bombs. Uh, and that's the work he continues doing today. This is his wife, Cassandra. They've been in Pelu a couple years, and they've got a couple more years to go because one of the major battle sites of World War II. It's got a lot of bombs to defuse. They currently work uh, for a group called Demining International. Their main goal is to go out and teach other countries which have anti-personnel mines or munitions the people how to recognize it and avoid it so people don't get hurt. We started out the day by looking at some of the Japanese defensive caves. Build up during the war as well. You'll see the extent of the beer bottles as well. Down here there's some food cans and there's old bits of leather which were aprons from their uniforms and things like that. The Budweiser can is not original, 1944. All the other bottles are. Okay. We got quite a lot of bones from down in this tunnel as well. Approximately 30 sets of bones were in this, were in this tunnel section here. You can see the bats are up there as well. Mm. Little bats. They generally don't hit you. They're not the, the fruit bat which the locals like to eat. Yes, I tried the bat when I was there, and yes, it's as disgusting as it sounds. We're not going to progress much further than that because it starts to get really heavy going, okay? Um, and then there's about 30,000 bats that live down there. <laughs> right. we, can, we can do it if you want, it's totally up to you, I don't mind. <laughs> I'm just looking around for these scorpion spiders, but I haven't mm. seen any yet. They're about as big as your hand. Actually, probably not as big as yours, Brian. Okay, just to my left and your right is the entrance to Tunnel 2. Okay, and we'll go up there and have a look as well. Is that one of them crickets? No, we're bad. Sorry. Squealing, squealing girlies in the background. After we were done getting attacked in the caves, we decided to go check out the runway, which was the main objective of the attack. Now, the runway was captured within three days. However, the rest of the island took over three months to take out. Japanese had these highly fortified caves and a series of ridge lines which they were able to hold out. And they changed from their standard bonsai tactics and actually dug in and did a more guerrilla type of campaign, which made the battle much more costly for the Americans. Now, after the Marines conducted the initial landing and secured the airfield, they handed the island off to the army to finish routing out the Japanese. The battle was so intense that the planes would take off from the airfield that they just secured, drop a bomb, and land within 30 seconds, reload, launch, and take off again to try and rout the Japanese. Now this massive battle left literally hundreds of tons of unexploded ammunition on the island, which was a major hazard to the visitors to the island. Given 85% unemployment rate on Peleliu and the fact that most of their income comes from these tourists, it's a major concern. Steve's nonprofit group, Demining International, comes in, identifies the explosives, removes it, and detonates them safely to keep the area safe for the tourists and for the residents. Yeah, 25 mil pan water. We've seen a lot of 75 mil projectiles. Both sides use those. 
So they might have been, they might have been getting fired in by the Japanese mainly, trying to attack this position. Very yeah. What is this uh, right here? We removed two tripwire devices from there. Okay, still with the explosives and everything in it. <laughs> and on this corner here were three booby trap devices, which just look like concrete blocks, which uh, basically contained a, a Kirin beer bottle filled with black powder, gasoline, and sulfuric acid. Detonator inserted into it, covered in concrete, two wires going off that you could then initiate through means of a battery. Water. The American 81mm mortar, slightly bigger than the American 60mm mortar that we saw down at EB Sledge's position. Still a Mark II fragmentation hand grenade over there. But so this stuff is just all over the place. I look forward to seeing you all again soon and showing you off my new apartment. See you next time.